Hello. I wanted to show off my 3D printed robotic wheel assembly. This thing. By uh, spinning it up and showing you a little bit about uh, how strong it is and what some of the pieces are inside. Should just be a pretty short video. So you can see here the wheel is spinning. Uh, I'll do more of the talking when it's not spinning. So for now, I'll just demonstrate what it can do. For now, I'll just demonstrate what it can do. So I was putting a fair amount of restriction on the spinning of the motor, but it kept going. It can go faster. Uh, this says the motor is spinning at 5,000 electrical RPM. can't remember how many coils it has. one was 15,000, but I think my neighbors are going to kill me. Um, so this is a 3D printed planetary gearbox with some off-the-shelf bearings and tires and a motor spinning with the uh, Benjamin Vedder's open source VESC motor controller. It's a really top-notch motor controller as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it's using this uh, 3D printed gear assembly. You can see uh, some gears off in the distance and this housing here. This one was a little tight, so I'll have to reprint these gears. I'll show a, a moving one later, but I've got them assembled right now. That's the output plate, which attaches via this poorly made design spline here um, to the the wheel, and you can see there's a bearing in there. This is the rim, and then this tire is wrapped around the rim, so this is just like inside there. This is the motor that I'm using. It's the Turnigy SK3-6354 260kV brushless motor. That assembly, although it's buried upside down has a magnet on the end and then I'm using angle encoders actually this setup is um, um, not using any encoders at the moment uh, but I have gotten it running with the encoders on a different fixture and it's very nice so um, this is planned to do that this is the same assembly that's bolted to the bench or that's that's clamped to the bench but with two differences well, three differences there's no tire um, and this isn't screwed together and that's the only primary difference also that assembly has a magnet attached right here and the encoder will mount on, on this screw pattern here um, I said it's a planetary gearbox yeah these screws are not attached right now they normally will be um, it's a planetary gearbox so it's a 4.3 to 1 gear reduction. It's, um, you can see there's some restriction to its, its spinning, but with just a little momentum, it, 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 it spins pretty well. Um, this is printed with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle on my Monoprice Maker Select V2 that I've Pretty heavily modified for the Maker Swiss hot end on it and a Duet 3D uh, mainboard are the really the primary mods. 
um, in a Noctua fan. Uh, that printer is printing right now. It's printing more parts. Um, currently printing this output plate you can see down there for um, another gearbox I have. So I have uh, mostly four gearbox and wheel assemblies together at the moment. Um, show you a little bit more about the design here. So this that assembly that's clamped is is one of these plates. This is the plate that's clamped over there. Um, the bearing for the wheel fits over there. Like that. Um, this is an unshielded bearing, but I'm using shielded bearings in there. The motor wires come out either in this orientation or this. Um, I use a plastite style screw to go and do all the assembly, so there's no nuts in this assembly, just the screws. Um, this slides into this part. Not sure if I'll be able to tear it apart. No. Um, so this mounts it to a chassis um, in sort of this style, so that the wheel goes there, and then some suspension will be figured out um, to go to the chassis. The chassis is still under development, um, but the wheel assemblies are coming along pretty well. We've got the parts for them. So, um, yeah, at this point, I am building a four-wheel drive vehicle with independent suspension and for these assemblies. Um, this is all open source. The design files are on Onshape, and if you ask for a link, I'll send it to you. Um, I suppose I could try to put a link to this in the video description. Um... Yeah, I just want to make a robot that can go off-road, that you can make um, at home or in a small shop. And I want to see what... Uh, I'm really trying to make robots that people are actually going to find useful. I made a robot before called Scout that was more of a demonstration of the idea that you can use a 3D printer to make good robots. And I've gotten better at doing the robots. Um, but Scout wasn't... A, Scout wasn't inherently useful, aside from the fact that Scout was really fun. Um, it was a really fun project, and I love Scout. Uh, but I'm trying to make something that that actually drives people to to build these, where people feel um, like it, it it actually makes sense for them, even at an economic level, to go out and spend the the this the bomb for this robot is around twelve hundred dollars. Um, I think um, uh, somewhere between 900 and 1400 not not including a computer probably 1200 for the mechanicals not including well that's 1200 for a basic driving robot with a Raspberry Pi for a brain but if you want to have uh, any real intelligent compute on it you need an additional computer like an x86 computer or an Nvidia TX1 um, so that's those are another several hundred dollars for a computer powerful enough to do a real perception um, to do you know uh, indoor and outdoor navigation so uh, one of the things I'd like to do with this platform is uh, uh, run uh, build up a basic control software for it uh, I don't know if I'll use ROS or, or, or just uh, just drive it in a simpler fashion um, but um, I want to run some deep learning models on it there is uh, Nvidia has published on github a classifier that will classify forest trails uh, they've already demonstrated that it works in my target area they, they they developed it in Washington and then they tested the network on trails in Santa Cruz and the Santa Cruz mountains which is where I want to test this out um, and it, it tells the robot whether to go straight or turn left or turn right to stay on the trail. Uh, I think it would be really cool to build that into this thing. Um, that's pretty straightforward to do. Um, I've been talking to some people about um, actually uh, using recycled plastic. Uh, I've been watching some videos um, about people who um, collect just PET plastic bottles and grind them up and remelt them to make new parts and I'm interested in um, trying that out seeing if I can make durable parts certainly using off-the-shelf plastics um, 
have a very predictable material performance and I can um, uh, I, I can make robots that are strong enough I, I think to do uh, some really hardcore off-road robotics um, that still remains to be seen and that's one of the things I want to test with this but people say well you know you're, you're not making it out of metal it's not strong enough it's oh 3d printers aren't strong um, that's something I hear a lot um, but I think that if you make things really sturdy you can deal with the um, you know the weaker material uh, we have many things that we used to make out of metal that we make out of plastic now and we found a way uh, because it's cheaper um, I like the idea of being able to do it in a home shop with a 3d printer so rather than buying your robot from a company that's going to charge you an arm and a leg for first party repair parts where they see that as a way to you know make additional profit off their business model you, you just share parts with friends and you print them um, you don't need to buy robots from somebody else you can just make them yourself uh, if you have a home 3d printer so i'm using a printer i bought for 300 dollars and put about 200 dollars of modifications into it so uh, you know if you're really into it it's a 500 dollar 3d printer you can buy a really high quality printer just like this one totally assembled for one thousand dollars so if you're not um, interested in modding your 3d printer as your primary hobby like i am then um, you, you can buy more reliable printers at a thousand dollar price point and print as many of these robots as you'd like uh, i think the print time is about 100 hours on this thing um, so if you had 10 printers you could um, you'd have 240 print hours a day um, you can make more than two of these robots a day if you had 10 printers that's ten thousand uh, dollars and um, when customers if, if you want to make a business selling robots that you've constructed the customers can rest assured knowing that um, you'll, you'll never hold repair parts um, over their head as some expensive thing and that's there's so much that I like about this um, I, I, I write I write essays on my website about some of the other benefits to, to, to this stuff although I'd like to make videos because the essays are um, pretty narrow in scope and, and there's so much more to this than I, I really have I've put in my writing um, at any rate just wanted to show off my current robot project and talk about robots for a little bit so thanks for listening have a good night